welcome to my channel so today i figured that i would do a nice kind of overall wrap up musings of what i've been reading what i've been listening to and things that i have been doing so i'll first begin with things that i have been reading um this year has been a pretty slow reading year for me i have just finished my eighth book which typically i would have been at this mark in like february or march but anyway, it's all good because I have been enjoying taking my time and really pondering themes and just really, really enjoying the books. The first book that I finished recently was Annie John by Jamaica Kincaid. And this is one of my favorite books of the year. I can say that confidently. I finished this sometime in the beginning of March, I want to say, and I'm still thinking about it. It is the middle to end of April. And Annie John follows a young girl. She's 10 years old living on Antigua. And she, we first meet her. She is fascinated by death, but very afraid of it. She doesn't want to go near dead things. Um, particularly, she's afraid of her mother's death. And this story is about her relationship to her mother, but then also her relationship to herself and how she grows and evolves into adolescence and young adulthood kind of creates a falter in her relationship to her mother to her home and how she wants to flee from it all this was a very beautiful character study on adolescence coming of age book i feel as though if you like the catcher in the rye any of those angsty somewhat unlikable main characters but deeply relatable main characters who are coming of age you would love annie john and jamaica kincaid's writing is amazing it is very interesting this is my first book that i've read from her and it's interesting because she writes mostly in like bulk. <laughs> she writes very long winded paragraphs, but they're very beautiful. And the writing is subtle, but it captures the nuances that we all felt, I feel, as we were coming of age. Especially Annie John being a young girl and what that meant for her changing body and changing relationships and kind of wanting to be in defiance from her family and her mother and one quote that sticks out to me i'm going to sum it up for you is essentially annie john's mother tells her that you cannot go around your entire life looking like a little me this is an awesome book definitely recommend that you check it out this made me want to read anything jamaica kincaid has ever written so yes i loved annie john up next we have interesting facts about space this is by Emily Austin, and you already know. <laughs> this actually ties into what I've been listening to, and I'll reference it back to that in a little bit. But Interesting Facts About Space follows a woman. She is a 20-something woman. She is dealing with um, a trauma that we don't really know until the end of the book, what it is. But essentially, she has an irrational fear of bald men, a whole bunch of tattoos, and she spits off these interesting facts about space when she's feeling anxious and overwhelmed and on the verge of a panic attack. These facts about space are a way to kind of ground her in her own reality. And if you know me and if you've been on this channel a long time, you know that that is right up my alley. This book was interesting. It was funny. <laughs> interesting. It was funny. And um, as a avid space lover myself, were there any new surprising facts I found about space? No, but I did like how this story, once again, related the grandness of our universe and all of these intense supernatural things that happen in our reality in space and uses that as a way to kind of help us work through life and the things that we struggle with or are challenges for us. So this was fun. Um, she's also obsessed with true crime podcasts. So she's paranoid, she's anxious. She goes through a whole bunch of relationships. She never really settles down and she's afraid of commitment and afraid to be loved. And this was a very endearing book in that sense. And yeah, it was fun, it was interesting, very quick to read. Um, I still want to read Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Henry as well. I hope I haven't been saying Emily Henry. Those are two different people, okay? Emily Henry is the romance book woman. Emily Henry is 
not her. <laughs> Wait, why do I keep, okay. <laughs> Emily Austin, this is Emily Austin. I'm talking about Emily Austin. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I highly recommend this book as well. It was a fun read, but heavy at times and made me paranoid <laughs> as well. Next, to add to my paranoia and fascination with like psychology and why people do certain things and how they get involved with certain things, I finally, finally read Cultish by Amanda Montel. I listened to this on audio and um, this was a very introductory, I would say, look at cults and specifically how the language used within cults entraps people into said cults. And this goes into like Scientology, the Jamestown cults, I think any major cults, cults from recent times in pop culture that has either convinced, unfortunately, their members to commit a mass unaliving or has convinced these people to spend their life savings and dev devout so much of themselves to thing or person or belief system. I will say I would have liked to see a little more analysis. This felt a little more retelling. I also have to say that this did something that is such a pet peeve of mine when books do, specifically authors, and that's when they bring up something and then say, you will read more about that in this section. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> this book did this. I want to say like nine or ten times and I was over it. I was like, okay, just let me find that out on myself, you know, like on my own. Did it teach me anything necessarily new or help me come to any amazingly profound revelations about cults? No, but it was still a fun and wild ride and very interesting. Also, one of my favorite book covers of all time. This is a very spaced theme book video last but not least for recently read we have annie bot by sierra greer this just came out recently it was sent to me by mariner books so thank you so much to mariner i read this and I'm still thinking about it as well but this is a more recent read of mine annie bot is a cuddle buddy bot for her owner doug and this is more so a character analysis, character study, and meditation on the ways in which specifically AI has been mostly female and it's typically used to serve the pleasures or needs of men. I remember an article that came out kind of recently that discussed why most AIs are programmed to be women first and they are considered to be subservient. So this was a, an analysis of that, but from a sentient, sentient, I can never say that word, sentient robots or AI. And she wants to understand what it's like to be human. And as we follow her, the more she learns about the human condition, the closer to being a human she seems to get. But this was an infuriating read in the sense that the male characters were so annoying. Roland, count your days. Read this book, you know who Roland is. He was so annoying, so obnoxious, and so dumb. And I also just feel like the male characters were caricatures and that was purposeful to kind of almost like satirize, satir, satirical rise. <laughs> Words are eating me up today, the story. So um, Annie Bot was good. I definitely think you should read it. And I think it will be a book that is kind of like a buzzy book this year. I've been seeing it around, Feminine Rage, but make it from the perspective of a female AI. Um, I'll just very quickly talk about books that I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading An Almost Done With Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. I recently dropped a reading vlog where I go more into detail about this book and my thoughts, but essentially we're following Steven. He is coming of age as well, but he is more so get introduced to him right before he graduates high school he goes to college he loves music but he's dealing and grappling with like grief and kind of like that unsureness that comes with change particularly when you have to leave your home your friend group is changing first loves all of that this is so good so far um, I did kind of hit like a wall in the middle of this 
but I'm almost done. Hope to finish this very soon and I will be going more into detail on this book in the Well Read Society book club. They invited me on to be a co-host co-feature co-host <laughs> for this book so I look forward to going into detail and really getting into the nitty-gritty surrounding small worlds but Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson one of my favorite books of all time um, is this living up to that expectation you'll just have to wait and see okay I'm gonna leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger there I am also reading there's always this year by Hanif Abdurraqib I'm so excited for this I am a basketball girl through and through I grew up playing basketball I love the sport and to have a novel by a poet that centers basketball in his community I'm eating it up I just started this literally yesterday I'm only on page 11 once again I love novels written by poets it's very poetic but we're getting into how basketball and the sports and love and affection and our familial connections how that all shapes us and the passage of time also shapes us so yes i'm excited to update you guys on my thoughts for this one and then a book that i need to start very very soon because i am also another feature for the big book book club by Roshin. she is another youtuber who i love watching she invited me on to be a co-host for this book and this is the love songs of w.e.b du bois by honore fanon jeffers i hope i pronounced the author's name correctly but I'm so excited for this. Do we see the size? This year is all about challenging myself. But I'm challenging myself getting out of my comfort zone, saying yes to things that I would normally say no to. In a book this size, I would normally run from. But I'm very excited for this one because it centers a young woman named um, Ailey Pearl Garfield um, who has understood Du Bois's words all too well. Um, it's about family connections and she's also a poet and a writer so I'm excited to read this. Um, Alright so next I'll go into things that I have been listening to recently. I'm going to start off with podcasts. I don't know what's happened to me but I'm officially in my audio sensory <laughs> era. Um, I'm usually not uh, but I have been loving podcasts. I've actually also been listening to audiobooks so much to the point where like I think I've listened to more audiobooks than read physical books, which is very, very unlike me. With that said, two podcasts that I've been loving, I'll first start her off with For the Healthy Hose. This is by Returner and um, her husband. I think his name is Sunshine Tim. But this is a very amazing podcast because it talks all about like my mindfulness and spirituality but it's very open and honest it doesn't feel too like positive psychology kind of like oh if you just think positive thoughts like the bad parts of life will wish themselves away it's very honest and I love their conversations you can tell that they have such an open and honest relationship because the conversations between them lend to that and I love a few episodes but more specifically one where they talk about the arrival fallacy and just kind of this idea that once we reach a certain point in our lives we will be happy i felt that recently with a lot of recent life changes and like accomplishing a lot of big things but then how we move the goalpost and we don't really fully enjoy the moment of where we're in so i would recommend that episode specifically if you also feel the same way but their podcast overall is great um, they talk a lot about creation and being being a creative and once again like spirituality mindfulness which are things that i practice and have been trying to be more intentional in my practice because i feel as though it leads me to become a better poet when i'm more mindful of the moment and i'm more present in the moment instead of constantly thinking about what's to come which is where i always find myself to be the next podcast that i have been absolutely loving is poetry off the shelf 
this is perfect i wanted to talk about this for national poetry month in april but poetry off the shelf is a fantastic podcast that features so many amazing poets i found myself first listening to the poets who i knew and have read their work for example, Diane Seuss was a feature on that podcast and she talks about all about Frank Sonnets but then also her upbringing and I just had such a greater appreciation for her as a poet, as an artist and I found myself to relate to a lot of what she said and it made me want to reread her collection which I was not totally drawn to when I first read it but now I want to revisit because I feel like I have a better insight of who she is but um a episode that I listened to recently and I want to find the exact name because the name of the episodes are really interesting it's called my awesome stoma and it featured the poet April Gibson and I listened to this this week and I had goosebumps chills and I started crying while I was driving because the poems were so beautiful I felt like I found another poet mentor that I'm constantly looking for and so April Gibson is a poet who chronicles her struggle not her struggles but yeah I guess her struggles and triumphs with being um or having like a chronic disease health issue um how she finds power in that also her upbringing of evangelical kind of very ultra religious parents and being a teen age mother and how her relationship to god and the bible formed her relationship to her body and to her disease and to suffering so it's it was so good I purchased her book on that and I just happened to be matching so much in this video. This was unplanned, but this is The Span of a Small Forever by April Gibson. And when I tell you everything that this poet touches on, I feel like I have contemplated because I too have a chronic health condition. So yeah, I, I'm fine, <laughs> but it's just things that I think about and I just felt so seen and I know people in my family who too have had struggles with health so I don't know it, it felt so beautiful to read this and to see her talk about it in such a poetic way but it was so honest and so truthful she did not hold back she gets into like the feeling she has of questioning and being angry and grief and just not wanting to be a certain way although she is and I absolutely love that these poems are amazing you need to read this ASAP I ordered it and listen to the podcast episode first because you'll hear her read some of her poems. The main one being my awesome stoma, which I believe she has Crohn's disease. So that poem was read in the podcast and that's the one that brought me to tears. It was so beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's that. In terms of songs that I've been loving, songs that have been on repeat for me, the first one has been Pictures of You by Drug Dealer and I always forget the name of the other artist. I want to say it's like Kate or Katie. Hold on one second. Yeah, Kate Bollinger and Drug Dealer. Pictures of You has been on repeat for me. I don't know, it's something so groovy and like the writing is so good. I love that song. I also love Saturn by SZA, which shout out to you guys if you messaged me and said that Saturn made you think of me because you know I was playing that song down, okay? It did not catch a break when it first dropped and even now I still love that song. So many of the books that I read fit into that. So many people ask for book recs based on Saturn. I definitely think you could start with interesting facts about space by Emily Henry because that kind of goes hand in hand with Saturn and wanting to be in another place, having an existential moment. And then last but not least, I have loved listening to Billy Toppy by Men I Trust. It's such a fun song. I love Men I Trust. So those are a few of the songs that I have been listening to. And last but not least, because I've been talking for so long, I wanted to talk to you guys about activities and just kind of what I've been up to, circling back to how I said I'm challenging myself by saying yes to things I would normally say no to. Um, recently, I was asked or invited by an amazing poet, Isabel 
she invited me to be a co-feature for her hot girl poetry event which is a monthly event that she hosts and i was so happy but so scared to do this because i am not i don't really consider myself to be a performance poet i think i'm more so a poet who reads their work and doesn't necessarily perform i don't really write spoken word poetry um so I often find myself intimidated being invited, to, being invited to spaces like that, but as I have done these events and as I have been to more open mics, I've noticed that that's okay. Like, I'm fine. I need to stop overthinking these things. So I did that and I will insert some footage of me reading one of my poems here. When you hold me, am I warm in the center of my belly? Can you feel my heart stutter as you pull me close? It's be jolted by your sweet yet electric touch. Is my love a home, familiar and comfortable, where you lay your head at night to dream free and wildly? Does everything begin to make sense in my embrace? Is your chest lighter? Can you breathe with ease now? Am I your quiet place? Is my body a temple, a place you go to feel God? Does my silhouette, when outlined by silk sheets, become softer in the moonlight? Am I as radiant as the sun just before she kisses the horizon goodnight? Does the feel of my skin against yours remind you of the softest velvet? How do you guard my heart in the space between your palms as if its matter is rare and beautiful? Mm. Do you sleep soundly knowing that no one can take it away? This has been an amazing experience doing this because it just made me so excited and so grateful to be in a space with other poets. Um, I also went to a few open mics in um, my neighborhood, my local neighborhood, and I've just been having a great time going out to poetry readings. I've also been walking more, journaling more, and one activity or practice that I have been consistent in is writing. Um, I think I've been saying this a few times, but I published my first newsletter on my substack it's called this matter because i thought it was an interesting play on words i love once again space and science so this matter meaning our physical matter like scientific matter but then also this matter that i am musing on reflecting on hyper fixating on um this like topic so that's kind of where the name comes from. Yeah, that's that. I have been talking so much. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.